Hello, it's James from X-Robots. This is part two of building a massive metal Hulk buster with Colin Furs. eBay have asked us to build something from the new Avengers Infinity War movie using parts only bought from eBay. So last time Colin made some metal legs with hydraulic actuators and I worked on the control system and also the CAD for the cosmetics. But I've done a bit more work on it since then. And here it is, so I've added quite a lot of detail since last time, around the chest we've got all these trim sections, and obviously I've got both legs on there and we can still animate this to see how it crouches down to check all those cosmetic panels fit, particularly around the waist there, and we've also got axis now in the arms. So let's have a look and see what we can do there, so the arm is going to lift out that way, and then the elbow is going to, uh, of course, lift out front and to the back there, like a normal elbow. But the first thing we've got to do is actually look at this helmet, which is going to be 3D printed. So I've cut my helmet up into lots of sections, which I can go and put on the 3D printer bed separately. But first of all, I'm going to work on this faceplate section. Right, here are the pieces. So these are printed in four pieces, obviously with a split down the middle, and these should go together to make the top. And that's where the kind of peak of the helmet comes. Here's the faceplate all together, but we better go and see what Colin thinks of it and see how he's getting on. Colin Furs. Ah! It's a faceplate. I've only got one glove on for some reason. Oh, well, no. So cool. We'll know about it. Right, here come me old. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably not far off, it's upside down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's gonna be alright. So that's coming on nicely. Time to get some more of this helmet printed. It's time to buy quite a lot of 3D printer filaments on eBay in red and gold. Well, it's looking pretty big. Still got some more parts to print. See, the truth is, I am Iron Man. It's weird, when you brought it in the door, I thought it was massive, but actually now I'm sat here, it is right. Yeah, like the whole thing's five ty five, ty five widths of the helmet. So yeah, it looks about right. Right, so we've got the upper body here. We've got a hydraulic pump, hydraulic motor. I've made this little uh, gear track here on the old uh, CNC plasma cutter. So hopefully, when we turn it on, like that. Lovely. All right, it looks good. And then we fit the arms on here. Yep. And those are the cylinders to push the shoulders out. Basically, that's what it's going to do. That's a good demo. I am Hulkbuster. Don't run away. I can't chase you, but I'm awesome. So we've got these side panels for the legs with these inserts and these of course are going to be painted gold in the same gold as the rest. And I've also got these thigh front panels, obviously we'll paint them a colour, like red. Right, we've got three new modules that are going to sit on the network and these have all got relay boards on the top. We've got one for each hand for those firing mechanisms and one to put the helmet up and down and we can see when the relays are on because they've got little lights on them. 
All of these are sat on the network, so they've all got those Cat5 connections, and they've all got external power at the moment, so I haven't put a battery in each one. But apart from that, they're the same as the Unibeam with an Arduino Pro Mini, that Max 485 chip, and everything else that's inside the box. So a helmet controller, I've just linked to the spare axis, so this will be the, the waist rotation joystick, but up and down now, it switches that relay, so you should be able to see those lights coming on there. So that's going to operate the helmet up and down, and the other two are for firing. So those, if you remember me explaining in part one to Colin the system, we've got a fire button for each one, but it doesn't do anything until you press the joystick fire button and hold down one of these. So that's that module. And that's the other one. It won't be long before it looks like the Avengers Infinity War Hulkbuster. Of course there's loads of heavy bits of metal to lift to get those arms on, and hopefully we can give it a test. James Bruton's first ride in the Hulkbuster. Right, it's all go at Collins. It's probably time to put some proper control electronics in though. I took some time in Collins' shed to wire up my control boxes. So here's one with a mysterious note on and hopefully you can guess what that's for. I've also got a battery that powers loads of things, including some lights in the knees. There's a handy wooden panel on the back I can screw everything to, so I've screwed all my 3D printed boxes on there. That's the main power unit for all of the electronics. Well, it looks like the head lifting actuator works, controlled by that joystick on the control panel. Of course, the secret items in each hand need some wires extending, and each arm has a connector so they can easily be removed. Alright, I'm up a ladder at the back of Hulkbuster putting in my final control electronics for the secret things that are down in the arms that might have something to do with these things. But you'll have to wait for part three. Each arm has a different secret accessory, but you can maybe guess what this one is. There's lots of things going on on the build with Collins guys doing lots of welding and grinding, so I thought I'd take the time to paint up some of my cosmetic parts. There's plenty of red primer and red top coat in the auto range on eBay. And I'm using straight on metal paint for the gold parts and we've got the brush on equivalent of the same colour for the actual parts of the Hulkbusters cosmetics, which Collins guys are making out of steel. I made various other detail parts that we can stick on the finished Hulkbuster and I've also got to spray that face paint gold in the same paint. But of course all the other cosmetic parts are made of metal and they require a bit more effort to get together. Hulkbuster smash! Ah! So it's about time we get those hydraulic controllers fitted and check all the limbs move from the control panel. You can check out Colin's channel for more information on the hydraulic pumps, but essentially we've got three pumps which are kind of overloaded with solenoids to operate all the limbs. So this should be my elbow control. Seems to be working pretty well. And that's the other axis on the arm. Yep, it's quite terrifying with about five tons of crushing force. All right, the control electronics are all fitted so we can control those hydraulics and everything else is looking great. And there's some more secret stuff up here you can't see till part three. That's the end of part two. Don't forget to check back for part three to see the whole thing finished. Thanks again to eBay for making it possible to build this Hulkbuster from Avengers Infinity War. And don't forget to check out Colin's channel for more of the mechanical build. All right, that's all for now.